Hi everyone! wanted to post a video on how to solve these simple interest problems. So I am looking at IXL. This is level I, or 7th grade level, section M12, simple interest. So let's quickly review the formula that we're going to be using along with the keywords that we will need to know. So I have this formula, I equals PRT, which stands for interest equals principal times rate times time. Now my interest is what I'm solving for in this case, and it's going to be the amount of money that gets added onto an account that's earned at a particular rate. It's generally for savings accounts or interest can be paid on top of things you owe, like credit card bills or, um, or loans. Our principal is going to be our original amount of money, whether that's the savings account or a credit card, whatever the initial amount, the starting amount is, that is where we will plug in our money. R is our rate, which is just another way to say percent for our Q equals percent times whole equations. This is incredibly similar. It's just we're adding in this time factor, um, which generally will be in terms of years, but every once in a while it will be in months or every six months. So in that case, we would have to adjust it to make sure that our rate and our time are matching units. They have to be the same in order to mathematically work. So let's start this problem. It says, Jeffrey has $70 in a savings account that earns 10% annually. The interest is not compounded. How much interest will he earn in one year? The question or the sentence in the middle that says the interest is not compounded is really messing some students up. Um, compound interest is when you earn interest and then you get continued interest based on the new amount of money. So if you have $10 and then you get a dollar of interest, the next time it's calculated, it's calculated on the $11, the total, instead of the initial $10. We're only looking at simple interest here. So we're just going to look at our original amount and we're not going to worry about that amount changing over a period of time, which is nice. It does make these a lot easier. So we are going to write a formula based on this information that is given and we will pay special attention to the last question, the last sentence to determine what type of answer this question is looking for. So he has $70 in a savings account. That's going to be my principal. That's what I'm looking for here. So I'm gonna write out a formula. Um, I'll actually do two formulas, but I will start with I equals my principal 70. And then I'm going to multiply it by my rate. And the reason I'm gonna write two formulas is because I wanna show you the two different forms this can take. I can either write this as a 10% or I can write it as a 0.01. They're the same thing and I like to use 0.01 because it's easier on a calculator. But um, if you'd rather write 10%, that's not a problem at all. And it's going to be multiplied by our time, which is just one year, so I just do one. Um, I'm gonna write that equation again using the decimal. 0 0.1. Okay. So these are precisely the same. I'm going to use that second one to actually calculate. So let's go to my calculator here. I have 70 times 0 0.1 times 1. And it looks like right here, it shows me that my answer is 7. So my interest, I, equals 7. That's cool. Now we have to figure out if that's the answer that IXL is looking for by looking carefully at that last sentence. It says, how much interest will he earn in one year? It's asking me for the interest, and I found the interest, which is 7. That's all I need to put here. $7. Sometimes it will ask how much money they have at the end of the year, and in that case, I would have to add in the original 70. So let's submit this one, and then we'll go to another problem that hopefully has something like that. All right, perfect. So let me delete these. Okay. Michael has $90 in a savings account that earns 10% interest per year. The interest is not compounded. How much will he have in one year? So we're going to start with our formula. I'm going to use a decimal this time, but if you prefer the percent format, that is completely fine. So $90 in a savings account, so I have I equals 90 is my principal, my original amount. It earns 10%, so I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.1 or 0 0.10, both are the same. And it's just one year, so I will multiply it by 1. And if I calculate this out, I will do 90 times 0 0.1 times 1, and I get 9. So here I get i equals 9. 
Now, I have my interest for the problem, but there's an issue with the wording on the IXL. It doesn't ask me for the interest. That last question says, how much will he have in one year? It doesn't say how much interest will he have. It says, how much will he have? That's a total. So I need to take that nine and I need to add it back to my original amount, my principal, which was 90. And that means I will have $99 at the end of that one year. So knowing that I have to carefully read that last sentence every single time, hopefully we should be able to work our way through these problems. I'm gonna jump up a level so that you guys can see what some of the harder ones look like. You guys don't have that option, but as the teacher, I do. So I wanna show you what the next level looks like. Um, it looks like the major difference here is that we are no longer dealing with one year, we're dealing with multiple years. But as long as we're typing in, or sorry, writing out our formula correctly, then this should not be an issue. So Owen has $100 in a savings account that earns 5% interest per year. The interest is not compounded. Again, that's just telling us, don't worry about adding it on. Keep it simple. Use this formula. How much will he have in two years? So my formula will be I equals 100 is my principal. Then 5%, I'm going to write 0 0.05 because that is 5% as a decimal. And I have to multiply it by the time, which is two years. When I multiply those three things together, 100 times 0 0.05 times 2, I get 10. So I get i equals 10. Now I have to go back and figure out if it wants the interest or the total amount. It says on the very last part of this problem, how much will he have in two years? It's not asking for the interest, it's asking how much he will have, which is a total. So I will simply take my $10 of interest and add it to my principal, that original amount, which is 100, and I will get $110. Ta -da. Okay, let's jump up one more level, see if anything crazy starts popping out. Actually, I wonder how high these levels do get. Okay, I think when we get to these top levels, it just becomes, ah, here we go. This is where it gets tricky. Okay, this is the one I wanted to look at. So, this is going to be a case where we have a time discrepancy. So our time is not actually going to match the interest rate. So let's see what happens. Kenny has $70,000 in a savings account. The interest rate is 11% per year and is not compounded. How much will he have in six months? So I will write my formula. I equals, I have $70,000, so I will type that in and I will multiply it by my 11% interest rate, which I will use a decimal 0 0.11. And then we are trying to figure out how much money he'll have in six months. The problem here is the six months does not match the 11% per year. If those two time units are not the same, I have to adjust one of them. So because I have a per year interest rate, I want my time to be in terms of years. So I have to think about six months and think, okay, well, what is six months in terms of a year? Well, it's half a year. So instead of writing one year, I can write 0 0.5 years, half a year. When I multiply those, I will be able to find out how much he's earned in that six months. Make sure I've typed it in correctly. Looks like my interest here will be $3,850. Very cool. And now we have to go back and determine once more exactly what the question is asking for. How much will he have in six months? So that $3,850, that's how much he's earned in interest, but that's not much, how much money he has. I would be very angry if I had $70,000 and then six months later I only had $3,850. That would be horrible. So how much do we have here? I have to, again, add 3,850 plus that original 70,000. And we will get 70,000, 73,000. 
$850. So as we get to these harder problems, make sure we're looking to determine that the time is consistent. And my advice for every single one of these problems is to write out your formula using those three terms, principal, rate, and time. Actually write it out. I know you guys like to just jump straight into the calculator work, but writing it out will get you in a good habit of making sure you have all three terms. And then the last and it seems like most important step is going to be looking carefully at that last sentence in order to determine if it wants the interest only, the answer to the problem, or if it wants how much you have at the end of that amount of time so that you can go back and add it to the original amount to find the total balance. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend and hope this video helped.